Hello and welcome to Autogefühl. Today with a report on the Land Rover Celebration Day here in Germany. A farewell to the old Defender. We know after more than two million copies built, the Defender is no longer produced. The reason? He is no longer compatible with the European Union directives for pedestrian protection. On celebration day, Defender enthusiasts can see all the models can go off-road have a skills track and ex expert discussions, and there's a lot of here, even with Mr. Land Rover Defender. Roger Crason has spent 50 years with the Defender, starting as an apprentice and then later as a test driver. Uh, do you have uh, some uh, personal adventure with this car? This car, personal adventure, the very first vehicle I ever owned was a Land Rover. It wasn't quite as old as this one. Mine was from, my original was from 1951, and it was always my day car. I used it to commute for family and friends, and uh, I went on my first expeditions in it. So, yeah, I have a fond memory of these very early vehicles. Yeah. Uh, what are the, the specials of this car? What makes it so famous? I think what made the, the Land Rover famous from day one is um, various things. One was the all aluminium construction, which made the vehicle quite light and gave it a very low centre of gravity. And very few people realised that the first vehicles when they were launched were permanent four-wheel drive. And of course, from those uh, friends and colleagues of Land Rover who'd driven um, early four-wheel drive vehicles, which were mainly Jeeps, they only had three speed and it was a steel body. So this vehicle was um, taken in quite quickly by, by people who needed to use a vehicle, especially as a toolbox on wheels. And um, the interesting thing is, is that the, the colour that we see here, dark green, was not the original colour. The original colour was light green. And because we had this big order from the British Army, they said we would take just under 2,000 vehicles for the first contract, but we want you to change the colour of the vehicle from light green to dark green. So from when they took their first vehicles around 1949, every vehicle became the dark green, which is affectionately known as bronze green. So yes, I have some fond memories of this vehicle, spent a lot of time, I still drive one today, I still have one. Uh, mine is still a 1951, not as quite as old as this one. Do you have a beautiful story for us driving this car? Uh, yes. When, when I had my original car, uh, when I was an apprentice, I always drove it with the windscreen down, with the, the roof removed, so it was just completely open to the waistline. And uh, quite close to where I lived, there was a nightclub known as the Aero Club. And I used to go there and um, I'd, I'd arrive put the car in the car park and walk into the club. And one night some girl said to me, oh, look at the mess your hair's in. Have you come in a sports car? I said, well, I did have the hood off. I didn't tell her I wasn't in a sports car. When I left the club that night, because she knew I lived in the same village that she did, she asked me if I could give her a lift home. She had a shock when she saw the vehicle because it wasn't a smart sports car and the windscreen was down. And when I was driving through the lanes back home, Apparently she had a hairpiece that some ladies wear, it blew off, ended up in the back of the vehicle. <laughs> Beautiful story. Uh, does it you sorry that this car is no longer built? No, not really, because this vehicle was the right car for the right time and it's lasted well for 67 years. And it was very much the right car for the right time. I think whatever the company develops in the future will be the right car for these times. And I think it's important to reflect that. 
Thank you so much. Roger Creason told us that he's still driving a Defender. What is special on this car? Well, I wanted it to reflect what the original vehicles were like, and I still drive a 1951 Land Rover, and I wanted my new Land Rover to be something that I was always going to enjoy. So I wanted similar specification, but with some of the modern attributes. So you can see it's got a canvas hood, uh, as the originals had, but okay, I have air conditioning, I have electric windows, I have Bluetooth radio, uh, it has heated seats, just in case my wife does need a lift somewhere. And, you know, it's, it looks like the original, but the latest iteration of it. So um, I enjoy it, and um, I certainly enjoy driving it over here, because th these vehicles are so quiet today, even with the canvas hood, I could still listen to the radio at 120 kilometers an hour on the highway, so it's good. And uh, do you think how old this car will be? Well, do you think it'll last 67 years? I think so. Yes, why not? The originals have, so why shouldn't this one? Often people say to me, how long will a Land Rover last? I don't know, we've only been making them 67 years. Uh, I've heard, it, I think it's nearly unbelievable, that 75% of built uh, defenders are still on the road. How is this possible? Well, the one advantage is it's, the Defender has always been a, an easy vehicle to service. So wherever you go in the world, there's always a cottage industry or a mechanic under the shade of a tree repairing Land Rovers. And um, they might not always have the original part fitted, but they can always seem to make them work satisfactorily. And because the early vehicles didn't have the complex electronics that you have today uh, to meet modern legislation, the vehicles are very easy to repair. This is the last produced Defender for the German market. Hand it over to the new owner on the celebration day. A lucky man. The Defender was produced 68 years. Incidentally, 75% of the Defender is still driving, including many of the age-old from the 40s and 50s. They have wars, safaris, expeditions, adventures survived throughout the world. The new owner should therefore have a lot of fun on this Defender. And can the car pass by on to his children? And if Roger Crayson is the Mr. Land Rover, Dieter Neltner is the Mr. Land Rover Germany, 40 years with Land Rover. Uh, do you remember the first Land Rover? Yeah, of course, I remember the first Land Rover. But I joined the company in uh, 1976. It's, yeah, I, I know from this time, uh, uh, I know the Land Rover very well. But before, it's also a new experience for me as well. Dieter told me it is better to speak in uh, German. Uh, let's change to German. Uh, we can see here the Land Rover Series 2. This is a Land Rover Series 3. And there is a Land Rover Series 1. Uh, which one do you have drive? Yeah, I drive the Land Rover. Uh, speak German. Yeah. Uh, Ja, ich äh, drive lieber die äh, Serie 3, denn da sind einige Verbesserungen drin. Ja, und äh, äh, ich möchte nicht sagen, dass es das modernere Fahrzeug ist, ja, aber es macht äh, mehr Spaß mit der Serie 3 zu fahren, als mit den etwas noch älteren Fahrzeugen, die ja noch einfacher äh, zu fahren sind und äh, ja. What have changed between one, two and third? Ja, es sind äh, eine Menge Unterschiede drin. Alleine 
die Bedienung in den Fahrzeugen ja, äh, vom zuschaltbaren Allrad, äh, der ja äh, in der Werke 1 äh, äh, schon vorhanden war, äh, über die beiden Fahrzeuge der Werke 2, zwei, äh, 2a. Zwei äh, man sieht ja auch die Scheinwerfer allein in der Werke 2, die dort drüben steht, die, die sind untergebracht noch äh, in dem, im Grill. Und hier sieht man schon äh, die äh, äh, Scheinwerfer in den Kotflügeln und natürlich auch die Blinker, äh, die Anordnung. In der Serie 1 sieht man noch, äh, was ja früher in den Käfern noch vorgekommen ist, die Blinker, die an der Seite angebracht sind. Ja, äh, das waren noch klassische Serie 1 äh, äh, Indikatoren an den Fahrzeugen. Ja. You are 40 years in the company. Why? What is, what is the fascination of Land Rover of the Defender? Ja, ich glaube, das ist ein einmaliges Produkt überhaupt auf der Welt. Die Vielseitigkeit der Fahrzeuge, die vielen Einsatzmöglichkeiten, die man mit den Fahrzeugen machen kann. In 68 Jahren, wie das Fahrzeug heute auf dem Markt ist, ist es fast liebevoll ausgedrückt, von der Serie 1 bis zur heutigen Serie 4 oder den äh, neueren Fahrzeugen ja äh, kein großer Unterschied da. Und die Faszination, dass auf der ganzen Welt die Fahrzeuge ihre Spuren im Sand und überall im Dschungel, überall auf der Welt hinterlassen haben. Und die Faszination, die ist wie ein Virus und der ist in mir drin. And now with us is Doug Rogge, lead instructor of Land Rover experience here in Germany. And, and keen, he can show us what is a Defender able to do. Yes? Yes, I can. The, um, my whole, nearly my whole life is covered uh, from driving with the Defender in the world. And you wouldn't expect what you can do with a Defender. Uh, when you go into the mountains, into the deserts, into the into water, wherever you want to go, a defender is a is a tool. Yeah, there are no borders. You are in more than 100 countries with the defender. Yes, I was nearly in one more than 100 countries in the world with a Land Rover, not only with a defender, um, but I would say half of them I uh, was there with a defender. Or with a Land Rover, with a Land Rover Defender, even with an older one, with a Series 2 or Series 3. Always an adventure? All the countries I uh, discovered, it was always an, an adventure because, um, yeah, you can go with a Land Rover, with a Defender, where you normally couldn't go. And what we did, we, we drove to places, uh, to communities, to small communities, uh, in, for example, in Argentina, in Australia, and wherever where you normally couldn't go with another car. And all the trips I made were covered by an absolutely personally adventure and an adventure for all the people who were with me. Are there funny things happen? Yeah, we have funny things. Funny things we we had in. In countries like, for example, uh, it was in Bolivia uh, when we drove nearly two days on a very, very, very bumpy road, and uh, we had a map, a map with us, and the map was telling us, okay, um, this road has a connection to a main road which we were looking for, and we drove nearly two days on that road, and when we came to the last town, I would say only 50k away from the main road. It was a dead end, <laughs> and that are the things that are the things you also never forget, uh, because then the next two days was covered also by that bumpy road and dusty road to bring us back to the point where we had started before. And now you are the head of this experience center. Is this a, is this near reality? Reality? Yeah, it is nearly. It's near reality. Um, it's near reality because uh, because uh, all the obstacles we we made in here um, are yeah produced of visions which I which I saw which I saw uh, in uh, in the world and that is that is that how we built the, the obstacles all the things we have articulations ups and downs side slopes are. Um, 
nearly nearly to original conditions which you which you can get which you can get and find in different countries in the world um, and it is interesting for all the people who are in the center and who wants to try a little bit of, or wants to do a driver training and the driver training is a whole day um, we explaining everything you want that's from sand water as i said before ups and downs side slopes articulations it's very very good And this is Reborn car number one. Very nice car. And with us is Till Beckmann, head of Land Rover Classic Germany. What is the Reborn program? The Reborn program is initiated by the idea that when the Defender runs out, that we start again. So by car number one, we start to recreate the whole spirit that was captured at the time when the car was uh, launched. So we try to bring all the bits and pieces together so that it's a little bit different to a normal restoration process, what you expect from a factory. You need parts. Where do we get the parts? Oh, we, have, we, have, we, we build parts, we, we try to source parts, we look all around the world for stuff that we need and that we bring the car to its back time, glens and glory. And where do you find this car? This particular wonderful car with a lot of patina is found in Australia. Um, it was used a long time ago, so no one spent really much care about it. But right now we try to keep it a little bit like before and after, so that you could see what we get. So we try to take care that the cars have a really good chassis, so we don't take any car, so um, the chassis must be okay and the bulkhead. So This, this part of the car must be all right, and all the rest we try to restore as close to the original specification that you could get. So it means we, we don't just renew parts. So we try to keep the parts yeah, as they are, so we build them up, we, we repolish them, we yeah, reform them. It's not like you go to a shelf, put a new part, take it and, oh, this wheel is ugly, we change it to a new one. So that's not what we do. Can you drive with this car? Uh, not yet. Why not? This car is before the restoration process. We try to keep it in that shape, but we have to do the engine and all the stuff. So that is the donor car, which we, yeah, we will do soon. A little bit of color and uh, to brush the engine and that it is? <laughs> no, that's not. We try to keep the car as original as possible, so we are limited with the colors. So this one is the most popular one, it's the dark green. You got a light green, which you see on the heritage cars. But the special thing is that we do, I wouldn't say mistakes, but we do it as they done it at that time. And when you look inside the bonnet, then you could see that the bonnet is not painted from the inside. And it is quite, yeah, a special pattern when you see. So the car is unique by only the batch and how it, it's made. So you see, it's still the original engine, it's still the fabrication and it got a lot of parts. They look really brand new, but they aren't. So there are old parts in between the new ones. So the car is driving uh, like the car in the 50s? Yeah, exactly like that. So it's still capable to do off-roading and we will do with our customers. So when we be ready with that, then we think we could do a tour with all the restored cars. Let's have a look inside. Yeah. It's not really a comfortable car. Depends on your bottom. Um, when, when you see inside the car, it's quite, yeah, simple. The idea from the Wilkes Brothers was that the car should be reliable and You could have a reliable car by two ways. One way is you make it comfortable, then you drive faster, and then you have to do all the things around the car really strong and heavy. Or you do it a little bit less comfortable, and then the car will be drive slowly over obstacles. And then the car is reliable without being heavy. And that was the idea. You might say it's uncomfortable, but in the end it got his favor and it's really a cool car. What was the price in the 50s? The price in the 50s starts at 428 pounds, I guess. 
Uh, I'm not 100%, but uh, pretty sure. But the car was uh, sold without roof and a lot of other stunks that things that you would say it's necessary normal. Uh, so there wasn't a heater inside and a and lot of other things. And most of the cars were sold around 520 pounds uh, when they sold 1948. So they got a little bit extras. And the price of the reborn car? Oh, we start with uh, 60,000 um, pounds. That is for a six... A little bit more. A little bit more. But in the end, um, it's still a bargain when you see what you get. So you got not only a car, you got a lot of story behind that. And yeah, it's a cool, cool idea. Uh, I think too. Everyone gets one or is it limited? Mostly it's limited by the amount of cars that you could get, but uh, in general the plan was to do minimum 25. We reached that target now, but um, we still haven't decided yet how long we will carry on. But as a look, there's a big demand, so yeah, we see what will come. And now we have the chance to drive the old cars, Defenders, the Series 1, 2 and 3. Clearly, When you sit in this car, immediately adventure images are free in the head. From movies and television shows as Daktari, where the Defender can be seen. But even of wars, because the car is indeed often used for military purposes. The British Army made it in 1956 as one of its standard vehicles. Even today the Defender is used in many crisis areas of the world by the military, but humanitarian organizations. So, and now I drive a Series 1 car from 1951. It's the first time I do it. Like you can see on the pictures, it's not fun for everyone. Uh -huh. It's an absolutely unusual driving. It's, uh, it's hard work. Now we are on board a Series 2 car from 1964. Uh, later on I will drive a Series 3 car. It's a dramatically uh, car feeling to drive this old cars. Look at this steering wheel and this, this gearbox. This day is a really nice farewell for an important car. But what's farewell? The Defender is already a myth, a car that children can identify on every continent immediately. It's an automotive dinosaur that will quite never die. But there is a new Defender in the pipeline of Land Rover. We'll meet again at Autogefühl with that story or others.